ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie with JRP Performance here. Just wanted to showcase Sam's build that we just wrapped up. So Sam actually got our Savage Package Long Rod 2 liter with our uh, custom JRP Spec Diamond Pistons, uh, which are a 10 to 1 static compression uh, using the S13 tool steel wrist pins, uh, along with the dry lubricant skirt coating. Uh, we're using Manly Turbo Tough 156 millimeter con rods with the 625 bolts. So we can rev the motor, you know, 9,900 RPM. Um, he's on a Sheepies uh, bottom mount 6466 turbo kit with a 1.0 AR. So pretty quick spooling turbo for the size. Granted, it is a 64 millimeter turbo. Uh, he has a three and a half inch ETS front mount intercooler, standard two and a half inch ETS short route piping with a mini battery. Uh, top ball valve obviously this car is on speed density. Uh, he's using a Busher Racing double pumper. Uh, he previously had two Volvo 255s with the power demands and the power goals that we're gonna basically have with the car right now. That wasn't gonna be enough, so we basically swapped out to two high pressure 450 wall pros for him. Uh, we have a fuel lap pressure regulator for him so we can control fuel pressure if we're running out of fuel pressure for whatever reason. Uh, 2150 cc injectors it's kind of funny to say but even if you are running out you can actually bump up the base pressure a little bit and get a little bit more fuel but mostly it's for control at idle and uh, you know part throttle driving when the fuel pressure tends to be kind of erratic uh, if you don't have a fuel pressure regulator and you have two pumps constantly trying to create fuel pressure over here you guys can see we have two dash 10 uh, fittings basically coming out of the valve cover uh, those dash cam fittings are actually going to STM catch cam, which is mounted on the transmission. We're also scavenging a DAX 6 port from the uh, dipstick. So there's three scavenge ports uh, from the engine so we can pull out as much crankcase pressure as we can. Uh, now our pistons do use the horizontal gas ports. So the more boost you basically put on top of the piston, the more pressure you put in there, the better they want to seal up, especially that top ring. But it's still a forced induction car and we're still trying to run 40, 50 pounds of boost in this thing. So you're still gonna have blow by no matter what. I mean, it's not a dry sump, so you need to scavenge as much as you can. So that's why we use the dash tens and we really love the, using the bigger ports because of that reason. This car is uh, running on Brad Penn 2050. That's typically what we run for these cars, either Redline or Brad Penn. The Brad Penn stuff, you do have to change a little bit more frequently because it is a semi-synthetic, it's not a full synthetic. So the oil does break down, especially if we're using with P85, it does dilute a little faster uh, because of the condensation properties and uh, hydroscopic properties of ethanol. So we do recommend the oil changes to be done at every 1500 miles. Uh, some people like to do it at 3000 miles, but we always say it's a very, you know, it's cheap insurance on a built motor. You just go ahead and do the oil change every 1500 miles. It's like a hundred dollars to do it. So. 